morning. I'm a subarctic beekeeper north of Fairbanks, Alaska, owner of Happy Creek Farm. And last night was solstice, so we had no darkness at all. But the bees do come into their hive at night, and now they're out getting ready to go out again. And so we're approaching the high season when everything is in bloom. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a second entrance to this hive. Right now you can see there's just the bottom entrance. It's not enough. The bees need to be able to come and go. And I'm going to catch the queen, put her in the bottom box, make sure her marking is still on there. And if not, I'll remark her. I'm going to add a queen excluder. I'm going to add a shim for a second entrance. Look over the condition of the colony of the hive, make sure everything's okay. And then close her back. to have everything you need before you go into your hive. It's also good to have a plan so you know what your objectives are. When I don't have a plan and I just go in sometimes, it's just wonderful. I can spend hours and hours and hours just observing the bees. This has been an active colony for quite a while. I've got my bee brush, one of my queen catchers, hive tool marker, queen clip. I'm going to move very slow and as you can see I'm not going to use a lot of smoke. I'm just going to get it lightly smoking so the bees know something's happening and if I have any issues where I need to move them down I can. I've got a tote here so as I take the frames out of the top box looking for the queen I'm going to set them in here so I don't lose anybody. Also so if the queen is on one of those frames I don't lose her. I can tell already this is a healthy colony. We've got some good things going on here. Temperature right now is maybe 50 degrees Fahrenheit. This is underneath the lid. You saw it before I did. It's a very active colony. I'm gonna set the lid over here on another hive. And I'm gonna move slow. Typically what I do is I distract them with a little sugar syrup drizzled across the top of the hives. I forgot to bring that out. It sure makes things a lot easier. Looking to see what else I have in my box. I don't have much. But, so I'm gonna use the smoke. Sometimes the smoke sends the bees into a panic. I don't want that to happen. I'd rather have them relaxed and calm and not thinking about me. I'm gonna move slowly. I always move from the right side to the left side. As you know, the brood nest, the warmest part of the hive is in the center, and that's where we typically find the queen. I'm gonna try not to kill any bees. Treat them with respect. Basic level of respect, everything is entitled to, which means to avoid violation of. So I'm going to avoid damage to any of these bees. Not an easy thing to do. This is a very active full colony. I've got a beautiful frame of brood right here, as you can see. I've got some drones on here. I've got some pollen, some larva. It tells me the queen is here. I'm going to tilt the frame and look for her. This year, it's, the color is white. I don't see her here. I'm going to set this frame upright in my box. I found that way I can fit more frames in here. Interesting that the queen's been laying on the end here. Well, that didn't work well, did it? It's wet out tonight from the dew and the frame slipped, which excited the bees. How I wish I had my sugar, my sugar drips right now. I'm just gonna slow down, add a little tiny bit of smoke, just a little bit. I'm gonna go in and get frame number two, gently. 
and slowly. I want to work with these bees. I'm going to have to, there's so many bees in here that I'm going to need to move them off the frame physically with my hive tool. We've got another very full frame. Spectacular. We've got some honey in the makings, some capped brood. I do not see the queen. I love that the color this year is white because it'll be so bright and easy to see. There's such a contrast between the white and the bees. We've got capped brood. We've got some Joan comb. We've got some Jones moving around, which is good because I've got some virgin queens. I don't see her. I'm gonna put this one right in the box, right next to the others. I'm gonna keep them warm. And when I move these together, I kind of jiggle them just a little bit to let the bees know that it's closing in because I don't want them to get squished. When we crush our bees, accidentally of course, they release the pheromone Panic pheromones. I don't want that. Frame number three in the top box. We've got more drawn comb. So this queen has been laying all over the place. Great news. I don't see her. There's a lot of drawn comb. Wonderful. These guys will hatch, you know, soon and start the hive will start using those empty comb cells to store honey. That's what's going to happen next in our season. It's a little bit slippery, so I'm being very slow. Okay, so we're on frame number four. And as soon as I find that queen, if I find her up here, good, I'll get her and move her down. If I don't find her up here, that's fine too, because I'll just add the queen excluder. I won't go into the bottom box. I'll just observe the top to see what's going on. Make sure things are looking okay. <laughs> the soldiers are out, ready to defend. Their butts in the air. Okay. This one is full of pollen and bees, of course. I do not see the queen. If she was unmarked, I'd be spending a lot of time trying to find her. I don't want to spend a lot of time doing that. So if my queens come unmarked, I mark them. I did just see a bee with bright orange pollen in the pollen pockets, which means she's out collecting dandelion. It's helpful to know what's, what's being collected at what time. It's kind of fun. Frame number five. Still no queen. She's in there somewhere, hopefully in the bottom box. I could feel this, this frame was real light. They've been building new comb on here. That's why it's white. I do not see her, particularly paying attention to the edges and the top and the sides. No queen, lots of babies, but they're doing, they're doing their work. Wonderful to see. Looks like a very healthy hive. They're very active, non-aggressive. The aggressiveness also is influenced by how I'm treating them. So I know she's in here because I've seen larva. I mean, she's been in here, uh, been laying just in the last few days. Do you see that jerky movement? Immediately caused a reaction with the bees. So if you can move slower and methodically, it doesn't startle them. Another light frame. I do not see her. Oh, beautiful capped brood. Beautiful, did you see it? I don't see her. Set this down gently. As you can see, I'm not someone who works with bare hands and no veil. I don't have the uh, courage for that. I don't have the zenness. So with my hive tool, I'm just sliding it gently across the frame to move the bees so I don't pinch any. So on here, another light frame with some new comb. I do not see the queen. It's heavy on the other side though, so I wanna see what's happening there. 
they're storing honey. Okay, she's nowhere to be found so far. Yesterday's hive, I found her in the top box and her mark was almost gone. I want to give those bees a chance to come out from under each other. Only three frames left. And at that point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a, a queen excluder in between these two hives and that shim, and I'll show you the shim. And I'm looking in here inside the box as I'm removing these frames. I don't see her. We've got some new drawn comb on this frame, which is great. I scrape mine down every three to four years. Lots of baby bees. Because that drawn comb will darken over time and it'll um, retain pesticides, disease, gunk. These ladies are hungry. I can tell because they're moving slow and they're sticking their tongues out on the top of the frames looking for a little treat. I did see one bee doing a little waggle dance in there. Always good to see. There's a good amount of propolis in here. It's antibiotic and antifungal. This is a heavy frame. I want to run my fingers around the bottom. See what's going on. We've got honey going on this one. Fabulous. I do not see her. So the risk I run is that sometimes the bees will take the marking off of the queen. And then we would have to spend a long time looking through all of these bees. And there's certain things you can do to help find her. She is, she is larger. She moves a little slower. Although when she's trying to move away, she skedaddles pretty quickly. She tends to be near the center of the hive where it's warmest, where the brood nest is. And she's not horribly hard to find, but does take quite a bit longer. I don't have that much time today. Looking for the queen. I think the dog that was hanging out by me just got stuck. No queen. Got some honey though. And they're eating some of it. If I've got a cluster or a group of bees together who might be hiding the queen, the queen I can breathe on her lightly, breathe on them, and they'll separate. What I did just find is something I want to get rid of right now. I found a little spot of defecation on the side of the hive. Poop is bad. Bad for bees. Can be a sign of dysentery, can be a sign of nosema virus. I want to, uh, to keep these clean and make sure that the bees can keep them clean. Makes their job easier. They've got better things to do. So I'm at the last, that was the last frame of this hive. What I'm gonna do now is look inside. And inside I have a picture of a lot of waggle dancing going on. Lots of bees. I see some drawn comb between the frames. I don't see the queen. So what I'm gonna do, take one of my extra lids, put it right up here, and I'm gonna take the second box off. Gently. Gotta get that propolis cracked. Oh, it happens. I take this off and put these bees up here. You can see how populated this box is. I can tilt it forward a little bit for you, as you can see. Exciting for me. Maybe exciting for them as well. I do see some prior squished bees. I just want to clean them out. Just want to scrape them off the sides. These are the ones that didn't get 
get through when I uh, closed the hive the last time. All right. Now I'm going to add a queen excluder. It's been scorched to make sure that there are no viruses, spores, anything else on there. I'm going to move these bees by rocking this back and forth. I don't want them to get caught and pinched. I'm adding this so the queen has to stay in the lower box. That way from now on she's got to lay in the lower box and the worker bees can use this upper box for honey. I'm going to add a shim. So this is something that I found out about last year. A fellow beekeeper was selling some shims and it was just one one of these with a little notch in it that she said you stick around the perimeter of the hive adds a second entrance. This is made for a wooden Langstroth hive. I have polystyrene hives, so it doesn't fit wonderfully. It's a little short. What I did is I combined two, so I have a larger entrance, added some uh, plastic hardware cloth. I don't like the metal. I cut my fingers a lot on the metal. Instead of setting it down this way, I'm gonna set it down this way. So it leaves a little dead air space. I don't want the bees to get caught so that they don't have enough room to travel between the metal frames. A lot of noise here in North Fairbanks. Maybe it's because people are coming into town in the morning. Queen's down in the bottom. She's laying wonderfully. I'm going to put this box back on. I'm going to do it gently. I'm going to line it up. If this shim was a little wider it would fit better and I'd feel more comfortable with it as it is uh, it could slide so I'm gonna ratchet strap my bees ratchet strap my hive I'm gonna put these frames back in any frames with honey I'm putting to the far right so that way I can check them in a little bit a few days and if there's a frame of honey what I do is I take it. We don't leave the honey with our bees up here for the winter. We feed them sugar stores two to one, a ratio of two to one sugar and water when we get to fall after all the honey's been taken. And that way, when our winter bees are being laid and then hatch, they have the capacity to hold their fecal matter longer. And our winters are very long and they're very severe, sometimes lasting up to seven months. Ugh. So they've got to hold on for that long. So I just got, oh, two of them stung. Luckily I have great gloves on. I'm gonna just smoke that stinger, that stung area. So that pheromone is gone. Otherwise, the other bees will smell it, and it'll be, let's, let's get her. So I'm carefully putting this frame in, making sure I know what I'm doing. When we don't know what we're doing, we make a lot more mistakes. I make a lot of mistakes. Well, I think we all do. That's how you learn. Sorry for the airplane noise. mistakes we can learn from them, which is a great opportunity. So I am putting frames back. I'm now towards the center of the brood nest. I've got four frames in. So what I want to do is since they're being returned to the box a little bit in a reverse order because the ones I took out first end up at the back of the tote yeah. and the ones I took out last were at the yeah. front of the tote. I am going to pull out the frames with the brood, stick them right in the middle. It'll keep them warm until they hatch. This is going nice and easy. I didn't get to see the queen, that's okay. I know she's in there. I don't see any signs of Nozima. 
I don't see any signs of mites. You can see the mites on the bees. I did treat them early in the spring. And I'll treat them again. There's another sting. Got to smoke that little pheromone off me. Here's some brood frames. Isn't that a beauty? Stick that right in there. We have a short blooming season. And when our nectar and pollen sources start to bloom, typically the temperature is too cold for the bees to forage. And then we have our dearth, which is end of August, everything's pretty much dead. I've planted for my bees, so I've planted some flowers that after our fireweed is dead, I have some flowers that are blooming. So wildflower wise, we don't have much after the end of August. And the bees typically start foraging late April, early May. Not very long for them to do all that they need to do, which would be Establish a good, strong colony. Fully develop. Forage. And make some honey. And then put up stores. The stores uh, are what, you know, uh, people in lower 48 refer to as, you know, honey for the winter. Like I said, we don't let them keep their honey for the winter. It's got too much moisture in it. it makes it too difficult for them to hold their fecal matter. And if my bees are going to be in here six, seven months, and they've got to hold it a long time, I want to do what I can. So we've got a few bees left in the tote, in the straggler. I mean, stragglers. I'm just going to. I just thought of something different. I'm going to knock them off after I've got this lid off because this lid is pretty full. brushing them off the back. You can't see that. They want to come out now. Now, now they do. I'm going to add just a little smoke. If I had my sugar syrup dripper, I would drip a little bit on the frames and they'd be fine. I don't want to crush these bees, but they keep coming out. So I'm going to just get this lid on with minimal damage. I've got to move it back and forth till it fits. It's like a Lego. We're looking good, we're looking good. All right, now these stragglers here, I'm gonna just bang them out. And they will find their way back into the hive as the day goes on. So I didn't use my brush, didn't use my marking tool, my clean tool. I did need my hive tool, but it's good to have them because you never know when you're gonna need them. So I've just added a second entrance to this hive. I hope you have a great day. And this has been a subarctic beekeeper from Happy Creek Farm. This has been a subarctic beekeeper from Happy Creek Farm. Have a great day. Take care.